Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we did a comparative study of different cache memory mapping techniques. So in this specific session, we are going to solve a very interesting previous year question that involves more than one cache memory mapping techniques in a single question. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Consider this question. It came in Gate Computer Science 2006 paper. Consider two cache organizations. The first one is 32 kilobytes, two-way set associative with 32-byte block size. That means the cache size happens to be 32 kilobytes and it's a two-way set associative cache with 32-byte block or the line size. Now the second one is of the same size. That means for the second organization, we also have the cache of the same size that is 32 kilobytes, but it is direct mapped. So the mapping procedure is a different one. The size of the address is 32 bits in both the cases. That means the physical address is 32 bits for both the cases. A 2 to 1 multiplexer has a latency of 0.6 nanoseconds, while a k bit comparator has a latency of k by 10 nanoseconds. Now, regarding these latencies, we will be discussing in details in our due lecture. The hit latency of the set associative organization is considered to be H1, while that of the direct map one is H2. So we need to find out the value of H1 and H2 respectively. So let's try to find out H1 first. Now it's given that the cache size is 32 kilobytes, which in terms of byte is 2 to the power 15 because 32 is 2 to the power 5 and kilobyte we already know to be 2 to the power 10. Now it's a two-way set associative cache. So the set size will be two lines. That means every set is going to have two lines in them. Now coming to the block or the line size, which is given as 32 bytes, which can be rewritten as 2 to the power 5 in terms of bytes, that gives us the block offset bits to be 5 bits. Now let's find out the number of lines inside the cache, which is 2 to the power 15 by 2 to the power 5, that is the cache size by the block or the line size, which gives us 2 to the power 10. That means there are 2 to the power 10 lines inside the cache. Now let's find out the number of sets inside the cache. Now the set size is 2 lines or 2 to the power 1 lines. Therefore, dividing the number of lines by the set size, we can get the number of sets inside the cache which is 2 to the power 9. Now the physical address is given as 32 bits. That means from 32 bits physical address, 5 least significant bits will be used for block or line offset. Then again, 9 bits are going to be used for the set number. And the remaining 32 minus 9 plus 5, that is 14. So 32 minus 14, that is 18 bits will be used for the tags. Now let's talk about the cache organization. We know there are 2 to the power 9 sets inside the cache. Now in order to get to any one of them, we will be needing multiplexers. Now the question remains, what should be the configuration of the multiplexers? Now since we are using 9 bits for the set numbers, we know these 9 bits will be used as select lines. In that case, the configuration would be 2 to the power 9 to 1. That means for 2 to the power 9 number of sets inside the cache, we need 2 to the power 9 to 1 multiplexers. Now the question remains, how many of these multiplexers do we really require? Now think about it. The set size is 2 lines. That means 2 lines will be making up for each set. Now we are using 18 bits for the tags, aren't we? That means both the lines inside each set will be having 18 tags associated to each one of them. Now with each input line of the multiplexer, it can only read a single bit. Now for 18 bits of tags, we will need 18 of these multiplexers. Moreover, it's a two-way set associative cache. That means we need to refer to all the tags of all the lines belonging to the same set. Therefore, we will be needing 18 multiplied by 2 that is 36 2 to the power 9 to 1 multiplexers. Therefore, in general, for a k-way set associative cache with s set bits and t tag bits, we will need t multiplied by k 2 to the power s to 1 multiplexers. However, since nothing's been mentioned for this organization in this entire question, therefore, we will just ignore it. Now, since we are using 18 bits for tags and it's a two-way set associative cache organization, therefore we will need two 18-bit comparators. Now, the output of these two will be fed into an OR gate. Now, let's talk about this OR gate for a while. We know for a two-input OR gate, if the inputs are 0, 0, the output is 0. If the inputs are 0, 1, the output is 1. And if the input is 1, 0, the output is again 1. And if both the inputs are 1, the output is 1. Therefore, we are getting ones for all these three combinations. Now consider this combination. 
we can state it as a bar b because a is 0 and b is 1. Now coming to the next one, it is a b bar, that is a is 1 and b is 0, that's why b bar. Now coming to the last input combination, it can be stated as a and b as both of them are 1s. So, a or b can be stated as this boolean function. Now from these, we can derive a bar b or a and b bar or b, which has been derived from these two. Now b bar or b is nothing but 1. Now let's talk a bit about multiplexures. Multiplexures are functionally complete. That's why using the multiplexure, we can implement any of the boolean functions. Therefore, in this specific scenario, if we consider b to be i0 and 1 to be i1 and keeping a for the select line, in that case, when a will be low, b or i0 will be selected and when a will be high, in that case, 1 will be selected. Thus, using this 2 to 1 multiplexure, this function can be implemented. And that is why the question has this 2 to 1 multiplexure, which will replace this OR gate in our circuitry. Now, in the question itself, it's mentioned that a k-bit comparator has a latency of k by 10 nanoseconds. And in this specific scenario, the k is 18. That means the comparator latency is going to be 18 by 10 nanoseconds, which gives us 1.8 nanoseconds. Therefore, the hit latency or H1 is going to be 1.8. Moreover, the 2 to 1 multiplexer that we are going to use, that also has a latency of 0.6 nanoseconds, which will be also added to this hit latency. Therefore, the H1 in total is 2.4 nanoseconds. So, the value of H1 is option A, 2.4 nanoseconds. Now, let's try to find out the value of H2, shall we? We already know the cache size is 2 to the power 15 in terms of bytes, the block size is 2 to the power 5 bytes and therefore the block offset is 5 bits. Now the number of lines inside the cache, we already calculated it to be 2 to the power 10. Now it was given that the physical address size is 32 bits in both the cases. Therefore, from 32 bits physical address, 5 least significant bits will be used for the block or the line offset. Nonetheless, this organization is direct mapped. Therefore, we have 2 to the power 10 lines inside the cache and 10 bits will be used for the line number portion. Now, we can easily find out the number of tag bits, subtracting the line number bits and the block offset from the physical address bits, which will give us 17 bits. That means 17 bits tags are associated with all the 2 to the power 10 cache lines. Now, during block identification, in order to get to any one of these cache tags, we need multiplexures. Now, the question remains, what is going to be the configuration of the multiplexures? Now, since we are using 10 bits for the line numbers, these 10 bits are going to be used as select lines for the multiplexures, so that we can get to any one of the cache lines. Therefore, the configuration of the multiplexures are going to be 2 to the power 10 to 1, where all the 2 to the power 10 input lines are going to read only a single bit of all the tags. Now, since we are using 17 bit stacks, therefore, we will be needing 17 of these. However, for this organization also, nothing has been mentioned in the question itself. Therefore, we will simply ignore it. Now, coming back to our topic, since we are using 17 bit tags, we will be needing a single 17 bit comparator. Because in the previous session as well, we have seen in case of direct mapping, we need only a single comparator. Now, the comparator has a latency of k by 10 nanoseconds which is in this case 17 by 10 nanoseconds because the 17 bit comparator is going to be used. Therefore, the comparator latency is 1.7 nanoseconds and that is also the hit latency or H2. Hence, for the value of H2, option D 1.7 nanoseconds happens to be the correct choice. All right, guys, that will be all for this session. I hope we learned something new and interesting. Hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.